Hello everyone, this is Mr. Farran speaking, and I thought I'd make a follow-up video to the one I made last time. Uh, if you remember last time, I made a video, I put it on my blog, and I talked about Unit 6, which, is all, which was all about world and responsibility. So in this video, I will talk about Unit 5, which is all about risk-taking. But before I talk about Unit 5, let me just quickly talk about a few things. Uh, first of all, regarding the first five audio recordings, uh, if you remember, I told you all that I gave you all an, exten uh, an extension. So you have now until the 26th of March to submit your first five audio recordings. Uh, yeah, and of course you do that on LMS. Uh, if you want more information about the, uh, the topics for the audio recording, then you can always uh, check my blog and on my blog, uh, as you can see over here, I have the, uh, the voice recording. Uh, I, have some, I have some samples over here. These are some of the things I recorded myself. And also underneath, you've got the prompts or the questions you can use if you wish to talk about that particular unit or theme. You know, all the way from unit one, all the way to unit eight. And then of course we have two more because we need 10 audio recordings. My notes are also on my blog, as I said before, so you can download my notes over here. And of course, uh, the last video I made, Unit 6, which I called the Coronavirus Class, can also be found on my blog over here. And uh, what else? Yeah, and this is the schedule we have so far. So hopefully, uh, if we go back to university on the 28th of March, we will have at least two weeks before the midterm exams, which, which should give us enough time to cover everything before the midterm exams. So please don't worry about anything. We're doing our best to make sure that you guys are, are happy and safe, and hopefully everything will be okay. So, so far we talked about unit one. If you remember in class, we talked about first impressions. We talked about taste and nutrition. We had our first presentation. We also had a listening quiz. Again, you have your marks. You should have your marks by now. And we also talked about units three and four. Is change good or bad? And we also talked about unit four, which was advertising. So um, the only thing left is we have, uh, again, unit six is on my blog. I made the video. In this video, I will talk about unit five. And hopefully when we get back, we will talk about the second presentation. Please also don't forget to work on the online practice. Uh, remember for the online practice it's basically just a link or a website and uh, you have exercises for every theme so all you have to do is when you log into the online practice just please make sure you do the exercises for each unit you don't have to do all the exercises but you have to focus on the ones that are relevant so please focus on the vocabulary the listening and the pronunciation Please ignore the writing and the grammar and so on and so forth. You don't need those. So focus only on the vocab, the listening, and the pronunciation. So for the sake of this video, as I said, uh, I will just basically uh, quickly cover Unit 5. And Unit 5 is all about taking risks. Now obviously uh, my class EL-109, it's a bit more difficult to do uh, via video because uh, the whole point of my class is, uh, you know, speaking and uh, having discussions and interacting with one another. And I'm basically doing all the talking in this video. So I, I highly, highly recommend, I highly, highly like suggest that you please find a partner or you talk to each other at home or you find a way to talk to, uh, to your friend in English and you discuss these themes together, okay? That's like, because if I do all the talking, then how will you improve? But I just thought I'd maybe make this short video and just so that I can maybe uh, get you to think and maybe get you to speak to somebody and uh, discussing these ideas. So um, the first thing I want you to think about is this. Um, think of this question. Yeah, uh, Are you a risk taker? And do you think that most people, are they risk takers or do you think most people like to play it safe? What do you think? If you are a risk taker, I mean, think of, think of why. Why are you a risk taker? Do you find it exciting? Um, do you find it scary? Do you think it's a good thing to be a, to be a risk taker or do you think it's better just to play it safe? Okay, so just keep those questions in mind and maybe you can use them to maybe uh, uh, when you record your voice or maybe if you talk to a friend, uh, maybe you can use those questions as well, yeah? And think of this question as well. What does risk taking mean to you? So when you think of taking risks in life, what what word what emotion what feeling comes to your mind when you think of taking risks yeah 
Um, do you think risk taking is a good thing? Do you think it's a bad thing? Uh, do you think that we need to take more risks in life or less risks in life? I also want you to think of your own lives. Think of uh, think of like the risks you've taken in life, and I'm sure you've all taken some risks, right? I mean, coming to a like coming to AOU is just a risk by itself. Sometimes, I had one student once uh, when I asked them in class, "What's like you know, what's like the biggest risk you've ever taken in your life?" And of course, he said, "Mr. Farran, you know, coming to your class, wallah, is like the biggest risk in my life." I don't know why he said that, but yeah. So uh, yeah, think of this question: What does risk taking mean to you? And would you like to take more risks in your life? Like, how would your life change? Like, imagine if, if, I, if, if someone had to force you to take more risks in life, do you think your life would improve or do you think your life would be more scary, for example? Or would it be scarier, for example? Um, what is the biggest risk you've ever taken? Again, please think of this question, right? And try to discuss it with somebody in class or call somebody, make friends with somebody and have a little discussion. What is the biggest risk you've ever taken in your life? Maybe, I, I think for me, it's getting married. My wife is not here at the moment, so I'm free to talk about that, yeah. Marriage is, of course, a huge risk because you are basically going to live with somebody for the rest of your life. And generally speaking, in the Arab world, we tend to, I mean, we get married very, very quickly. And yeah, you're, and you, you don't really know that person. And it's a big risk. I mean, you you have a certain way of thinking, you have a certain way of doing things, and then you end up with this other person, and you guys are living together in one house, and you have children, and you have a family, and you know, and yeah, it's, it's a it's a risk, and you everything's supposed to go smooth, but it doesn't always, right? So uh, think of your own lives. What is the biggest risk you've ever taken? Was it marriage? Was it having kids? Was it maybe changing a job? Uh, what is it? Maybe opening a business, right? And imagine, like, if you had to take a risk in the future, right? What kind of risk would you take? So imagine, like, you had to take a risk. Like, Mr. Farhan is forcing you all to take a risk. Um, what kind of risk would you take? Okay. There's this uh, interesting quote uh, by Robin Sharma who says, When we stop taking risks, we stop living life. So, again, think of this quote. What do you think it means? What do we mean by, if we stop taking risks, we stop living life? Can you live life without taking risks? Is that a possibility? Why does Robin Sharma say that? When we stop taking risks, we stop living life. And again, I want you to please think of your own lives, right? Think of the risks you've taken in your life. Or think of how your life would have been different today had you taken risks in your life. Okay? Risk and reward. So some people put those two together, like when you take risks in life, you get some rewards, right? I want you to think of this, please, like again, based on your own life. How are risk and reward related? How are they connected to each other? How can I be rewarded when I take a risk? Again, so please think of this question and think of maybe discussing it with someone. Maybe it could be a family member, it could be a friend, uh, preferably in English if you can. And think of how these two words are connected to each other. How can one be rewarded when one takes a risk? Okay. And yeah, I, again, I've, I think you've seen this picture before. I've put this picture before on one, on one of my slides. I think this picture is beautiful because it somehow represents life, as I said. And uh, because when you think about it, we all want something in life, whether it's a degree or getting married, or getting a job, or getting a promotion, or even changing your job, right? We all want something in life. And we know that in life, you know, nothing is free. Like, nothing comes free in life. And there's a risk involved in everything we do. So, again, this little mouse knows that, you know, he wants the cheese, he or she, he or she wants the cheese. Um, but there's a risk involved in getting that cheese. Because, you know, I mean, nothing is ever there for free, especially for human beings. So uh, if he if, if you know if, if he's careful enough he might get the cheese and he will be rewarded. So there's a risk behind the reward, right? So again, it's like you know if, if you want to get to the gold, you have to sift through the mud and, and you know through the dirt to get you know to get to the gold. And uh, of course, Ellen DeGeneres, you know the very famous she's a she's a famous talk show host. She was also the voice behind Dory in Finding Nemo the movie. She says when you take risks, you learn that there will be times when you succeed and there will be times when you fail. And both are equally important. 
Again, so think about that for a second. Why is it important? I mean, I mean, what will you learn, right? What will you learn when you fail? And what will you learn when you succeed, right? And why, why are they both important? Why is success important in our lives? And why is failure also important in our lives? So think about that as well, okay? Mark Zuckerberg, uh, the man who created Facebook, says the biggest risk is not taking any risk. Yeah, the biggest risk is not taking any risk. What does that mean? Think about that for a second. The biggest risk is not taking any risk. Yep. And again, think of your own lives. If you never try, you'll never know. I think this is very important because uh, a lot of the times we tend to, I mean, like we assume we know everything and sometimes we assume we won't like something because, you know, we just, we just have this feeling, right? But if you don't try something, how will you know? Um, just to give you a simple example, I once had a, I once had a student of mine and, uh, this person was a writer and I told him to publish his book and he told me, ah, oh, sir, no one's going to buy, you know, who's going to buy my book. Right. But the thing is, um, if you don't try, how will you know? Right? Like if you don't actually publish a book, how will you know? Maybe your book, I mean, your book could be a bestseller one day. Right? So it's very important in life to actually try to try to do things in life, because if you don't try, then nothing's ever, nothing's ever like nothing's ever going to change basically. Right? So once you try, then you will know. But if you don't try, you'll never really know. Um, maybe some of you have heard of this person, uh, Abbas ibn Farnas. He was a uh, famous uh, back in the uh, back in Islam's golden age. Um, he was a very famous inventor and uh, he was a thinker. I believe he came from Persia, Persia, and uh, he was one of the first people to actually attempt actually jumping uh, and, and flying jumping from like a high place and, and trying to fly um he would look at the birds and say you know uh, you know birds can fly why can't we fly and uh he you know he asked himself some questions um what makes birds fly so birds fly because we have you know because they have wings but what if we attach wings to ourselves what if i can build wings myself and i actually and i and i attach them to myself can i fly then now, I want you to imagine, what did people think uh, like, like, of his ideas back then? Like, what do you, how did people see him or think of him at that time when he told people, I want to fly? You remember, we're talking, this is like hundreds of years ago, right? When people, obviously, there was, there was like, little, like little technology, no cars, no planes, no nothing. So, uh, again, most people thought that he was crazy, right? When you think about it, you're crazy. You know, God gave you legs, use your legs. You can walk, you can run. You want to fly like a bird? Are you crazy? Now, Abbas ibn Farnas, he did not invent the airplane, but he was one of the first people in our history to actually think of flying. And he actually attempted, he tried to build a couple of, you know, wings and gliders and he stuck them to his, uh, he strapped them to himself. And he jumped from, you know, from like higher places or, or like elevated places and he tried to fly. Now, he did not invent the airplane, but it was, it was thanks to people like him and others down the line that, you know, today we enjoy the, the beautiful experience of just in flying in it like in an airplane. So he had to take a risk. Um, he had to take a risk. I mean, every invention is a risk when you think about it. The iPhone you have, the Samsung phone you have, uh, the microphone I'm using, the PC we have, the phone you're holding in your hand right now, for example, right? So all of these inventions, uh, there, was, there was like a risk involved. Can you imagine if every inventor and every author and every painter, if, if, they, if they said to themselves, who's going to buy my painting? Who's going to buy my invention? Who's going to buy my product? right? If those people did not believe in themselves, we wouldn't have this amazing technology we have today. So everything involves a risk somehow. Yeah. There's a beautiful movie called uh, Braveheart. It's a bit, it's a bit old and uh, it's actually a true story. I don't know if you've seen the movie, but it's also, it's actually a true story about a, about a famous uh, warrior. His name was William Wallace. And uh, the movie is about this warrior, William Wallace, and he was fighting for uh, Scotland's independence. He was, a, he, was, he was a Scotsman, he was a Scottish guy, and uh, he was fighting to help liberate his country from the rule of the British. And he says something, he says, every man dies, but not every man really lives. And I want you to ask yourselves this question, are you alive or are you just existing? 
Like, are you like, are you actually like living your life? Are you doing something worthwhile with your life, or are you just existing? So everyone dies. Every man dies. Every woman dies. Every child will have to die. I mean, not have to. It sounds kind of gruesome now. It sounds kind of morbid now. But I mean, like, every human will one day depart. Every human will one day leave this planet. But ask yourself this question before you leave: Are you really alive? Are you like really living your life? Are you chasing your dreams and goals? Are you doing something worthwhile with your time? Right? So a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people, like some people live and some people exist. And ask yourself, which one are you? Are you living or are you actually existing? There was a famous uh, Chinese philosopher called Lad Tzu. His name sounds like a sneeze, like Lad Tzu. <laughs> Bless you, you understand? And he says something, he says something beautiful. He said, when I let go of what I am, I become what I might be. Again, it's a bit deep. Uh, please think about this. When I let go of what I am, I become what I might be. Imagine some of us are scared to take risks. Some of us are actually scared to change our lives. But imagine when you let go of who you are, you just might become this amazing person you're destined to be, right? Every inventor, every painter, every artist, every writer, they had to let go of that feeling of that, you know, I just, I can't do it. And who am I? Who's going to, who's going to buy my book? Who's going to buy my painting? Who's going to download my app? Who's going to buy my invention? You have to let go of this negativity if you wish to rise above, right? If you wish to, if you wish to change the world, right? So let go of all that negativity. Let go of everything that's pulling you down. And you just might become the person you're destined to be in the future. In the end, we only regret the chances we didn't take. Think about this for a second, right? Imagine you're sitting there, you're 80 or 90 years old, and you think back about you. You think back uh, about your life. You think of everything you did and everything you didn't do, right? And here it says, in the end, we only regret the chances we didn't take. When you're thinking back about your life, you will not regret the things you did in life. You will regret the things you did not do in life. You will regret the chances you did not take, not the things you did. You will regret the things you did not do in life. You're not going to say, I wish, oh God, I regret, you know, making friends and I wish, tra and I, I regret traveling and I, I regret going to AOU and learning. You will regret not doing more in your life. God gave us all a limited time on this planet, right? So. You don't want to regret the things you did. You're going to pub, like probably like regret the things you didn't do. You're going to say, I wish I traveled more. I wish I did more with my time. Right? I wish I, I took advantage of the time I had. I wish I traveled more. I wish I saw more. And so on and so forth. So again, in the end, we don't regret the things we did. In the end, we will regret the things that we did not do. The chances that we didn't take. There's a very beautiful book, by the way, because, you know, reading is very important and I love books, by the way. Um, there's a beautiful book called The Top Five Regrets of the Dying. And it's a true story about a nurse uh, who works in a nursing home. And uh, for those who don't know, a nursing home is a place where they take care of the elderly and the sick people before, you know, because a lot of, you know, a lot of the people, like, let's say, in Europe and in America, they don't have close family ties like we do in the Arab world. And so... Uh, when the kids get older and they leave and they move out, uh, parents uh, some, sometimes they, have, they sometimes these people these people are sick, and they are forced to go to to like a nursing home, and you know and they usually die there. Um, so this nurse she decided to because she works in a nursing home and she's surrounded by you know a lot of old people who usually die, who end up dying you know while she's there, she thought of maybe she 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 said to, she said to herself why don't I ask these people what they regret in life. And let me let me just compile everything into a book. So if you want something interesting to read, uh, I highly I highly I highly recommend you get this book. It's called the Top Five Regrets of the Dying. And by the way, because we are young, mashallah, we can learn a lot from these older people. We can learn a lot from the re from the regrets of the people who came before us. Just to quickly show you the top five regrets from that book, here are the top five regrets that this nurse found, and a lot of them were actually common. They were like they, this is like what what most people said. Uh, number one, I wish I'd had the courage to live a life true to myself. Not the life others expected of me. Now think of your own life. Are you living a life that is true to yourself? 
or are you living the life that other people want you to live? And unfortunately, a lot of us, we are not true to ourselves. Like we live life because we want to please maybe our parents, maybe society, right? Even majors, sometimes you choose a major, not because this is the major you like, or maybe you study something, not because this is something you've always wanted to study, but you do it because maybe you want to please somebody or because you had no other option. So ask yourselves, are you living a life that is true to yourself? Forget other people, by the way, right? Um, just be true to yourself and live the life you want to live. Number two, I wish I hadn't worked so hard. You know, we sometimes we work so, so much, we forget to, you know, we forget to call our parents, we forget to stay in touch with our friends. And you know, the thing with work is that, you know, if you die the next day, they're going to put an ad and they, and, and they will just hire someone else. You see, work doesn't finish, right? And sometimes work comes, you know, in, like, in between you and the things that are important in life. I heard a very interesting quote once that says, um, your salary is the bribe they give you to forget your dreams. Again, think of that. Your salary is the bribe they give you to forget your dreams. So if you just spend your life working 24 seven, or just, if you just, if you just, if you dedicate all your life working and you forget, you know, the people around you and your parents and your friends and your family and your kids, that's not really a good life to live, right? Because when you die, they're just going to get someone else instead of you, right? Number three, I wish I'd had the courage to express my feelings. Again, this is very important. I think it's uh, it's also interesting. I think a lot of the times we hide our true feelings towards each other and we don't tell people how we honestly feel. And I think people have a hard time saying, I love you and I'm sorry, and so on and so forth to others, whether it's family members or friends. So I think it's interesting when, um, if you think about it, I think we should be more honest with each other and maybe more open with our feelings to one another instead of hiding them. Uh, number four says, I wish I had stayed in touch with my friends. Again, this is something which is very similar to number, uh, it kind of kind of goes back to number two. When you think about it, with every milestone in your life, every time you graduate from school or, or university, you somehow lose touch with others, right? So it's important. It's important to stay in touch with family and fa family and friends and so on, right? Because, you know, they're the ones who actually make your life more interesting. It's not your job. It's probably the people around you. And number five, I wish I had let myself be happier, right? You know, they say you only live once. I know it sounds cliche, but uh, yeah, I mean, like we have this one experience we call life and it's very important for us to kind of make ourselves happy because, you know, when we're gone, that's it, right? So live your life, enjoy it, try to be happy, enjoy the small things in life. And yeah, I mean, just, just enjoy, the, enjoy this experience. Some people are suffering in hospitals, some people are dying as we speak right now. And, you know, thankfully we are okay. So enjoy, enjoy the time you have before it goes away. Now, since I'm Mr. Farran and, you know, since I like playing little games with you guys, I thought I'd play this little game with you. It says here, you, d you take a risk and you decide to get married next week, okay? Even if you're married, please pretend you're single, right? And I want you to imagine you're going to get married next week and you have to take a risk. And your mother tells you, choose either A, B, or C. You can't ignore this question, by the way, right? So just follow your gut feeling. Follow your gut feeling and choose. Would you go with person A, person B, or person C? Okay? I'm going to give you maybe five seconds. Think about it. Just choose a letter. A, B, or C. Mm, okay, so I hope you chose a letter. If you chose A, congrats, this guy is your husband. Now, he seems like he has a nice personality. I don't know. He seems like a nice guy, I hope. Uh, if you chose B, this guy is your husband. I can just imagine the look on your faces right now. And uh, who chose C? Did you? If you chose C, then this guy is your husband. Yep, exactly. I can see some of you, you're fixing yourselves at the moment. Okay, good, good, good. Now, let's do this again, but this time, imagine you take a risk and it says you decide to change your job. Again, this is only for fun, don't worry, okay? So, you decide to, uh, you decide to take a risk and you, de you decide to change your job. Again, just go with your gut feeling A, B, or C. Okay? Ready? Okay, if you chose A, congrats. 
you work in Zen, which is not bad, by the way, right? Zen, you know, Zen is a nice place. Okay, if you chose B, uh, you work for McDonald's. Yes, interesting. Why not? You make people more. You make people fat, and, and you make you make them get more calories, eat more calories. Why not? And if you chose C, Mabruk, you work in Mahamid. Yeah, nice place. Again, if you download my notes, you will always get a list of words, phrases, and quotes. Again, you don't have to memorize all of this. You just, you know, just keep them in mind so that uh, on the midterm exam, when we ask you, we might ask you to talk about one of the first five units. So yeah, just keep, the, you know, keep these ideas in mind. And as always, I will give you a list of, uh, let's say, short, five, five or six short videos to watch from YouTube. And obviously, obviously, they're all related to uh, uh, risk taking. Again, their purpose is just to give you more ideas, so that uh, if you ever have to ever have to talk about the uh, about this theme, then you can maybe talk about it with ease and without stopping. And yeah, thank you all for your time. I hope you enjoyed this short video. And uh, yeah, I will have an online session soon. I will send you all the message on LMS, just so that I can maybe clarify everything and yeah, maybe answer your questions and. Uh, answer your concerns as well. Thank you for your time and uh, see you online soon.